Hi, Lewis Kemper here with my adventure van, Wanderer. I've had plans for doing this van tour for quite a while, and I really wanted to do it outside in nature, somewhere really pretty and whatever, but due to my work schedule, travel plans and whatever, I haven't been able to get anywhere to do that. So we're gonna do it here in my driveway. So unfortunately we have to put up with the noise of cars going by and whatever, but that's what it is. In this video, I wanna show you some of the main features of the van. Mostly I'm gonna concentrate on the exterior, but we're gonna go inside too and talk about the major components that are in there. In the future, I'm gonna do another van tour of all the little things that I've changed or decided that I need to carry with me to make travel and van life a little bit more practical and enjoyable. So I hope you find this informative and let's get started. So we're gonna start on the back of the van with my prime design ladder. And the reason why I picked this ladder over all the others is that I could put it on without having to drill holes in the van. So I found that to be very useful. It just slips over basically the door frame. I've got my van speed uh, spare tire rack on the back and that's about it for back here. Now we'll cruise around towards the front. So I want to point out my Black Rhino tire rims and my uh, BF Goodrich KO2 tires. Those were additions. And moving up front, a couple of questions. People always ask what that pipe is that's hanging out there. That's the exhaust pipe for the diesel heater, for the interior heater of the car. And I wanted to show you that I've upgraded the suspension. And you can see in here I've got the Van Compass uh, Falcon shocks put in. And these are adjustable shocks and they have different settings and you can change them for the road conditions for dirt roads, you know, bouncy roads, regular street driving and freeway driving. So they'll make the van handle better and more comfortable doing my long drives. And the one last feature I want to show on the exterior is my Fiamma awning here that goes the full length of the van. And this is the 45S awning, and it's uh, motorized so that I can put it out and operate this and do it with one person, basically. In another tour, I'm going to do a little feature on what's on top of the van with the solar panels and my InstaConnect uh, angel wings and whatever I'm storing up there. So that'll be another time. Now we're going to head inside the van. But before we go in, I just thought of one more feature I want to show from the outside. So I want to show you my van essential bug screens. We'll start that with the uh, rear screen. And you can see that I can have it so it's bug screen at the top and you can open up the bottom separately to get into the garage, which is a nice feature. And while I'm down here in the garage, I'll just point out a few things. And here is where my inverter lives. There's the fuse box. There's a little vent basically for the inverter to get air. I've got a little light down here. Over on this side is my outdoor shower connection, my water fill, and some little storage area back here. And you can see that I'm using these bins back here in my garage to keep things organized. And this last big open space here I think is going to be where I'm going to store my uh, foldable kayak once I get that. Underneath the bed, strapped up to the top, you can see is the um, teak uh, shower pan for putting down for the outdoor showers. I've got that strapped to the bed. And now we'll go on to the interior. 
So as we step into the van, there's a few features I'd like to point out. Um, you can see dead ahead strapped to the wall are my Van Essential uh, sunshades. And I got the Van Essential sunshades because of what I really like is that for the other windows, not just, you know, not the front cab windows, but for my rear windows in the van and for the window here on the cargo door, I can leave these up and then they just fold up and you can fasten them in place and don't have to worry about storing those covers so you don't have to worry about using up a lot of room obviously the front windows you know you can't leave up so I store those over on that side wall another thing that I added was these sheepskin seat covers and I really really enjoy those for some reason Mercedes designs their vans to have black interiors and you've got this giant windshield that lets in all this sunlight and all this heat and the seats get so hot you can't sit on them so without having a towel down or the seat covers or whatever you really can't sit down in the summertime I've also added a fire extinguisher behind the driver's seat and up by my overhead compartment I have a carbon monoxide and smoke detector now I'm going to put the camera on the truck, oh, also on the inside. I've got my Van Essential bug screen that goes over the side door. It's obviously up right now and I like these because, you know, you can have them up. You can drop them down and it's easy to get in and out of. So I'm going to put the camera on the tripod and show you some of the other features of the interior. So welcome to the inside of Wanderer. If you've watched any of the other videos, I've already demonstrated how the bed goes up and down. And actually, I'm going to show that one more time because I need to get to something that I'm going to be showing you. But how the seats go up and the table comes out and all that. So if you want to learn about those features, you have to watch the older videos. So look down below if you subscribed uh, to the channel. And while we're speaking of subscribing to the channel, please do so. If you like these videos, let's see, it's this side. Click on the subscribe button and uh, become a member here. So I'm going to show you some of the main features here and I'm going to go over the refrigerator, um, my induction stove top, the microwave convection oven, my toilet, the sink, uh, the electronic controls here basically, uh, what all these controls are on this side and then we'll take a look um, underneath into the garage area a little bit. So that's the plan for today. So right now, as I mentioned, right here I have my induction stove top. I've got the Isotherm 200 refrigerator, and the reason I got this is it's just basically a huge refrigerator freezer, and I can store a lot of food that way, so that way if I'm going out and I'm going somewhere remote for a week or so, I don't have to worry about running out of food and having to leave to go resupply. I'm going to go carry the camera around and show you these features in a little bit more detail. People are always asking about the bathroom. And I went with the dry flush Lavio toilet, which is right here. It's a full size toilet. Basically what this is, it's like an astronaut toilet. So you do your business in the toilet. You push the little button, it's battery operated, runs off the 12 volt. And it takes your waste basically and wraps it into a foil, basically triple layer and you get about 15 uses per cartridge that goes in here and once it wraps your waste up basically you can't smell it i actually have used the toilet and there's you know i'm partially through a cartridge so there's waste in here there's no odor whatsoever uh, i've driven all around bounced it around and everything and no problems whatsoever so that's pretty cool I'm going to take the camera off the tripod now and show you a little close up of some of the other features here. So, as I mentioned, here's the induction stove top. And mine's by Impava. It's a two burner, so I can do cooking quite well in here. I've got it covered with this little foam thing that I found on Amazon because I found it's. Uh, you can scratch it, so I want to make sure I don't do that again. I did put a little scratch in. Here's that big sink I was talking about. If 
we spin around, I'm just going to show you how nice the freezer is. So I have all that room for frozen things as well as all the room I have in the refrigerator. The controls on the side, I have an air conditioner, so this is the remote for the air conditioner. This is the remote for my Max Air fan, and this is for my heated floor. So I do have this middle strip of the floor has heat underneath it, so on those cold mornings I can warm up the floor and not have to wear uh, my shoes inside. I can be in my socks or bare feet and still stand on the floor in a cold morning. Up above here, here's the control to turn the inverter on, which powers all the 120 equipment in the car. And just flip that on here. And it's a Sun Gold Power uh, series remote control. Up here, this is my switches for all the 12 volt items. So I've got my exterior lights, my InstiConnect, which is my uh, Wi-Fi solution. I've got the button for the amplifier for the music. I can turn on the diesel heater, uh, the water pump, and then I have tank heaters for my uh, water system, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Here I have the controls for my Eberspacher diesel heater. It's a thermostat and on-off switch. I've got my retract and extend for the um, awning outside. And I have my switch for controls on the subwoofer. So I'm going to talk about like the water system and the electrical system in here. And in order to do that, I need to raise the bed in the van. So in order to raise the bed up in the van, I got to bend down. Push my little power button and I've got three settings for the different heights I can set the bed to. I'm going to raise it to the uppermost setting here. And then I'm just going to show you where the batteries are stored and where the water tank system is. And talk about that a little bit. So now that you can see when the bed is up, over on the passenger side, there's a storage compartment over there. And that's what houses my batteries. So I have 700 amp hours of battery power storage here in the van. So most of them are in that compartment. But there's either one, or I can't remember if it's one or two, that's underneath this seat. So on this side, in this compartment here, is where I have my water storage. And I have a 20 gallon water tank inside the van. And the water pump is in there. I also have a 27 gallon tank underneath the van. So I plan to use that when I'm going to go somewhere and I know I'm going to be kind of parked for a while and in a region for, you know, staying in one place or a very small area for quite a while. And I want to have plenty of water and not have to go out again. I'm not really going to carry all that much water all the time because water is heavy and I have to worry about weight constraints. For the outside water tank, there is um, a tank heater in the water tank and that's where you saw the switch up here I mentioned tank heater so when it gets cold outside that automatically will turn on and stop that tank from freezing. A couple other things I wanted to point out was up here I have my max air fan so this can either blow air in from the outside or take air from the inside and blow it out. And then back there I have my air conditioner, so when it's really hot out and I can't keep the van cool, I can turn on the air conditioner. And it's a 12 volt air conditioner made by Dometic, and that'll help keep the van cool on those hot days. And there's one more feature I want to talk about that I haven't installed yet, but I want to mention that the Mercedes comes with a uh, fairly small gas tank. It's either 20 or 22 gallons, I forget which. I think it's actually 22 gallons and when I'm fully loaded with this thing and you're driving really not just not the freeway but multiple kinds of roads and going fast going slow going uphill downhill I'm really only averaging about 12 miles uh, per gallon here so I can only go about 240 miles before I need a fill up which is really you know three to four hours of driving time so not very far not very long 
and part of my plan this summer is to drive um, up to the Arctic Ocean in Canada on the Dempster Highway and there's times where you have to go 250 to 300 miles between gas stations so I'm replacing that gas tank with a 40 gallon gas tank now obviously adding another 20 gallons of gas is going to add a lot of weight to the van and I have to be conscious of the weight that's in the van because I'm really close to the max that you can have so I mentioned having the big water tank and then I'm going to have the big gas tank and I have to be aware that I can't have both of those full at the same time so as I mentioned the big water tank is when I'm going somewhere and I know I'm going to be in a small general area for a while uh, maybe a week or so you know exploring a little area not doing a lot of driving so then I can fill up water is going to be my priority but then when I'm driving something like the Dempster Highway where the distance between gas stations is more the priority and once I get to those gas stations I can always add water if I need to so that's not going to be an issue getting water it's going to be getting from point A to point B so in that case I would go without filling the underwater storage tank or the um, below van storage tank and just have water on the interior tank and then I can fill up the gas tank all the way so I'm gonna to have to learn how to balance that ratio but I think having that larger gas tank is going to make things a whole whole lot better for me I experienced that just when I was in the Carrizo Plains on the last video I went into the Grizzo Plains, you're about 45 minutes away from, from the gas station by the time you get there. You drive around for an hour and a half, two hours, and then it's like, well, I need to go get gas or I can't drive around any longer. So you got to drive back out for another 45 minutes, or I went out a different way. It was about 35 minute drive to go get gas to come back in and explore the Carrizo Plains again. So having the larger gas tank on a trip like that is going to be more valuable than having tons and tons of water because I'm only staying there two or three days kind of situation and I can always replenish the water after that. So it's all a matter of juggling and balancing when you're working with a van. Every inch of space counts, all every pound counts and you have to think about all of those factors. So in a future video I'm going to cover the little things that I'm carrying that I think make van life uh, easier things that I think are essential for van life. I'm going to talk about the equipment for just working on the van, the air compressor and those kind of things that I'm carrying. I'm going to talk about uh, just all my storage containers, all of those kind of things, all the little gadgets that I've bought and uh, hopefully um, you'll find those informative as well. So please remember click the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.